In this video, I'll be showing you some of the new features and changes within Greylog release 5.1. To start off, we have many new core features in Greylog. We've got updates to the user interface. We have a new pipeline rule simulator. It's an excellent way to test your pipeline rules with a message and not ingest logs while doing it. We've got time zone settings now in all your syslog inputs. And we now have a support bundle download option. We have index set default configurations and smart indexing, which I'll look at in detail. And we have the ability for CIDR lookups. One of the interesting features we also added is the ability to help migrate your searches into event definitions. And by doing that, an event definition improvements made so that when you create searches, you have the ability to pivot directly into your event definitions. Let's get into some demo of these features. So the first thing you'll notice on the login page, which is our welcome page, we've added a few things here. Your history, your last viewable items that you've had in your list, or on the right, you'll see if you've got any favorites that you've clicked and wanted to add to your favorites, you can very easily quickly get to these individual dashboards inside of Greylog. On our streams, you'll notice we've got a table set up for all of the streams that have been created. You'll see at the top of each stream, you've got the ability to sort each of the items within the table. We've also added the ability to filter a little bit different now, so we can filter based on these different items for created or index set or status. And if I wanted to pick paused, I can see which ones are paused and not running. The other thing we've added as well, when you're making changes or needing to pause or start groups of streams, you can click on the bulk actions option by highlighting. It gives you the ability to assign an index set, start streams, stop streams, or delete streams. So that'll give you some of the features there. Moving forward, we have the ability, as I said earlier, to load a message and apply it to a given input type or to a specific codec type that you've built and test your message and see what the output looks like. So that's very interesting to have by just taking a message and running it through your pipelines and rules to make sure it's working well. And as a nice addition to this, if you go into your individual pipeline rules, in this case, I'm editing the gold prices rule. I've got an API where I can get the current gold prices and below you'll see my active rule. And in each rule now, what you can do is paste a raw message that you're receiving from there and execute the actual rule simulation to see what the results look like. This makes it a much easier way to implement rules and add them inside of Greylog. We've also here our time zone setting in each of these syslog inputs. You'll see at the very bottom. So if you check that out when you upgrade, you'll see that. The support bundle, this allows you to set your logging levels for all of your different types within Greylog to pull your logs out of Greylog and create a support bundle and download it. This is very handy when you're troubleshooting anybody that's installing Greylog and you're working with any anything Greylog and trying to find some errors. Through our unenterprise version of Greylog, it can be a tool that can be used to send it into Greylog support when working on Greylog. The next thing I wanna go over is we've moved around our configuration items inside of Greylog. Now we've got them in menu items to make them a little bit easier to manage. This also opens up the next feature for index set default configuration. You'll see here, I can set the individual setup for the shards replicas, as well as the max number of segments and, and field type refresh intervals. And you'll see the rotation strategy and size. So you can change this to anything that you like. And that way, when you add new indexes, you may not be going too large with your index by mistake. You'll be able to always size them with a given level based on your requirements. So that'll cover that. The next one we have, which is a big change in, in the index sets, is the ability to change and set up a retention strategy based on lifetime and days. So this makes retention much easier and adds a feature to give you the ability to change the individual lifetime and days before your rotation strategy kicks off, whether that be delete an index or archive or whatnot. So this is a big change in indexing, makes it much, much easier to look at your indexes and know how long you want to keep them versus trying to calculate your values and how much storage you're going to need over the time frames. And the next feature, the lookups for CIDR lookups. You'll notice we have an example here configured for a CIDR lookup adapter, but you'll see on the right hand side, there's a couple different variations of this. Once for mapping and looking at an IP address to a host name, the middle one is for a IP address, MAC address and host name. And then the last one, is tagging with the subnets with the subnet name. So you can 
enrich your logs and add this information to your logs, or you can query different hosts on your network and run notifications on those. And last for the core features I wanted to tell you about, we have this new feature called event definitions and creating a wizard or have a wizard option. So here I've got a save search. I've been watching for some activity that's been going on for a particular user and I've noticed this information. So you'll notice now within an aggregation or a field, you can click on a field and you can create an event definition. So you'll notice I've got, you know, a lengthy query here, but I've also got a lot of activity. So when I click on this field and create an event definition, you'll see under the custom ability, now you have the options of selecting which things you want to appear in the event definition. And what's really nice is from here, you can continue the configuration and it automatically pivots and goes directly into the event definition. So this is a really good way to pivot from your logs to create an event definition. And you'll notice all of the parameters have been added in here. You do have to go back obviously and put the title and name in, but the big thing is you have all of the information has been put in here. In this case, for this particular one, I'm gonna search every hour for this one. Uh, I've got all the data for it, but moving forward, you can save this very quickly. So this makes event definitions much easier to pivot from a log or a message and create a wizard to start your event definition right in event definitions. We've added some new features in operations as well, including some tech packs that illuminate version 3.3 for Checkpoint, PFSense, and Snort3. We're now making it even easier to install Illuminate with the Illuminate Hub, as it's now included in the product for automatic download. You'll get a notification in the Illuminate menu, and you'll have the ability for the bundle update there. We've introduced a TTL, or Time to Live option, with configuration for enterprise lookup tables, and we've introduced a new integration input for CrowdStrike, Falcon, as well as an input for Microsoft Defender endpoint logs. Let's take a look. So you'll notice here on this window, we've got an option for Illuminate and inside Illuminate, you'll notice we have a notification here. So as we go into the tech packs area or processing packs, you'll notice we have a new option on the screen for installing a new bundle. This will be done automatically in band. So you can actually do the install without actually moving the files yourself. The next we'll look at the custom error TTL. So you can actually define this for all of your lookup adap adapters and tables. And inside Graylog now with the CrowdStake Falcon integrations and inputs, and as well the Microsoft Defender integrations and inputs. So it will pull and get your logs into Graylog from these two types of sources. And inside Graylog security, we now have options in Sigma rules where you can create your own bulk configuration options, as well as add your own custom Sigma rules repo for keeping your own Sigma rules. We've added the ability to create your own custom anomaly detectors in the UI. And finally, something brand new, we've introduced investigations in the security menu. You'll now be able to start investigations from save searches, dashboards, and logs, and gather evidence. Each of the investigations, when you open them, can be assigned to other users inside of Greylog. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. So you'll see inside of Greylog, here we've got the Sigma rules area inside of security. If you click on Sigma repos, you can add a dedicated Sigma repo. Going back into the rules, the bulk options, if you want to select more than one rule, you can enable the rules, disable the rules, or add notifications to these specific individual rules. You can now go over and into security anomalies, add a custom anomaly, anomaly detector directly inside your logs, and the investigations module. As you'll see here, I've got one archived, but in the open area, you can create a new investigation fill it out with a name, who it's assigned to inside of Greylog, set the priority and status and leave a note. Once it's been created, you can also go into your logs. And if you look in some default logs in your Greylog instance, I can go in and pick a particular amount of data. And in this instance, if I want to look at this one particular MD5 hash value, you can say, you know what, I want to add this to an investigation. I'm going to create a new investigation. And I'm going to send it to myself, set the priority to high and status. I'm going to say investigating and confirm and create that and confirm. Now, when you go to security and investigations, you'll see that we have one configured. When you open it, it will show you what events have been added. In this case, you can go back into search and you can add logs to this particular 
instance. So this particular log, say it was something I was looking at, I can add this to the investigation. And you'll see on the investigation that the logs are being added as you go. And you'll see you can add notes and save the results inside the investigation. That concludes a quick look at some of the features in Greylog version 5.1. To get more information, please follow these links below to get more information on releases and visit the documentation site on some of the new features. Please check out our comments at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Happy logging with Greylog.